Today in the show, we're gonna be looking at the history of Dick Grayson. If you didn't know, at one point, he cheats on Starfire with Mirage, then this show is for you. So we all know Dick Grayson's origin at this point, so I'm just gonna be looking at his Crisis on Infinite Earths origin rather than like his Golden and Silver Age origin because Crisis one is sort of considered the definitive one. So Dick Grayson started life out as a circus kid. One day Boss Zuko comes to the circus and tells them to pay up for protection, otherwise an accident might happen. The owner of the circus refuses, and that night Dick's parents mysteriously die in an accident. Bruce Wayne just happened to be in the audience to see Dick's parents' death. But following this, Dick was actually put into the juvenile care system because there wasn't any room in any orphanages. When he finally made it into a Catholic orphanage, Bruce Wayne would adopt him as his ward, not his son. That didn't happen until quite a few years later. Bruce wasn't ready to be a guardian. In fact, he was a pretty crappy guardian. He didn't pay any attention to Dick whatsoever. So Dick actually one night snuck out to try and figure out why his parents died because Dick knew it couldn't have been an accident. Like something was telling him this was not an accident. While he was out investigating, he was actually attacked by an associate of Boz Zuko. It was only thanks to Batman turning up that Dick was able to survive. When Dick wakes up, he's in the Batcave and he finds out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Following this, Bruce and Dick team up to bring Zuko to justice, but Zuko would die of a heart attack before they're able to bring him down. But after all of this, Bruce offers Dick the chance to become his partner, and so Dick begins his training to be Robin. He trains intensely for six long months, and at the end of the training, to make sure he's ready, Dick has to hide in Gotham for one night without being found by Batman, and if he's found, he fails and he can never be Robin. Not only does Dick succeed, he also ends up bringing down the mobster, Joe Minette. His first year as Robin went pretty smoothly until one adventure involving Two-Face. You see, Two-Face kidnapped both Batman and the district attorney, and it was up to Robin to save them both. Both of them are in like a hangman's noose kind of trap. So when Dick tries cutting down the district attorney, he doesn't realize that there's a double trap and the district attorney ends up falling into a water tank and drowning. Dick in this moment panics and this allows Two-Face to come along and beat Dick up and Dick almost dies. He's only alive now because Batman was able to escape himself and save Dick. After this, Batman like suspends Robin from duty for quite a while. And this whole thing haunted Dick until he was like in his 20s. He's only like an early teen at this point. During the Golden and Silver Age of comics, he would tag along with Batman on a number of adventures, but most of these adventures are widely considered non-canon now. And they were very campy and of their time. Like they consisted of things like stopping Catwoman from rigging a beauty pageant. And oh no, there's a new dynamic duo in town. Batgirl and Batwoman. But as comics progressed and as he got older, he got to get to know other hero sidekicks. And eventually he forms the Teen Titans with Wonder Girl, Aqualad and Kid Flash. At first the Teen Titans book is like, still of its time, it's very campy. It's about these teen heroes taking phone calls from other teens to help them with their teen supervillain problems. This was 1966, so you can't really expect more than that. But as the 70s drew closer and came, the comic had a massive tonality shift. It went from being this campy teen book about teens to being about social issues. There were stories to do with militarism, to do with the Vietnam War. There were stories about racial tensions and it just morphed into this social activist style book, which was obviously a huge thing during the 70s especially. And Robin was at the center of this book for nearly its entire run. The Dick Grayson who we know now was formed in this form of storytelling. Like we wouldn't have the Dick Grayson we love now if it wasn't for this book, because in the Batman book, he was being written as Batman sidekick Robin. He was never allowed to develop and progress beyond that. And in this book, he was allowed to develop and was allowed to progress. And as a result, we got a fully fleshed out character. However, as the team got older and started nearing their 20s, they realized they couldn't be Teen Titans anymore if they were in their 20s. So they just disbanded. And after this, Dick started attending college and his appearances were like few and far between. We just 
didn't see much of him at all anymore. Eventually, he would meet Terry Bergstrom and he would find out she's a psychic because she goes missing and she starts contacting Robin by using these psychic images so he can track her down. And then following this, he finds out that she's actually cousins with Lilith Clay. Lilith Clay is obviously omen of the Teen Titans, so he tries reuniting them, but this causes them to be possessed by an evil spirit. So the two of them have to be kept separate, otherwise they will give in to that evil. Also, shortly after Barbara Gordon was introduced, he would have like a flirty relationship with her, but this was quickly brought to an end initially because an evil scientist would kidnap her, brainwash her, Dick would save her, but like she would lose all of her memories of who Robin really was. Like she wouldn't know Batman is Bruce Wayne anymore or Robin was Dick Grayson. And they just kept it that way. There was also like a time where he drops out of university, starts going back to university and then is turned into a vampire and Batman saves him. It was weird. Eventually, a woman called Raven would summon Dick Grayson, Donna Troy, Wally West, Beast Boy, and two brand new characters named Cyborg and Starfire to create a new team of Teen Titans. Even though most of them were like 19 or 20 at the time and weren't really teens, Dick joined for two reasons. Number one, he really wanted to bone Starfire. Like, really wanted to bone Starfire. Like they kissed the first time they saw each other. And two, he really didn't have much self-worth at this time. He was constantly in Batman's shadow. All he would ever be is Batman's sidekick Robin, and he wanted more for himself. So he felt like by joining this team, he would find his answer. In their first adventure as a full team, they actually end up causing Grant Wilson, the son of Slade Wilson, to die. And this is what sparks the continuous animosity between Deathstroke and the Titans that is like a staple to this day. Dick was in so many stories during this time period that I do not have time to cover every single one of them in this video. Like the new Teen Titans went on for years, but I am gonna highlight a few important stories. So this whole thing of Dick not wanting wanting to be Robin anymore was on his mind for a long, long time. He was even in a relationship with Starfire for ages and was never able to properly commit to her because he felt like he was living in someone else's shadow. He still wanted to be a hero and he still wanted to be the leader of the Titans, but he didn't want to be Robin while doing that. So one day after an adventure, he turns around to his team and says, Donna, you are now the leader. I quit. But shortly after this, he's kidnapped and brainwashed by Brother Blood. And Brother Blood tries making Dick kill his old teammates, and he almost does. The only thing that breaks him out of this is his love for Starfire. And he's able to resist this, but then Brother Blood shoots energy at Dick, and it looks like Dick is dead. The Titans break out, and they're able to rush to Dick's side, and it turns out he survived, but he's gonna need a long time to recover anyway. Also around this time, he comes into contact with Superman, and Superman tells him, a story about a man on Krypton who believed in justice and this man's name was Nightwing and this just sort of sticks in the back of Dick's mind. Behind the scenes Slade Wilson had been hired by the Hive to attack and take down the Titans and he hires a mole called Tara Markov to join the Titans and take them down from the inside out. When Tara reveals she's a mole none of them can resist her every single member of the Titans ends up being kidnapped. Dick would start freaking out, he'd start looking for his friends, and this is when Adeline, Slade's ex-wife and the mother to his children would turn up. Adeline would explain how Slade used to be a war veteran, like he lived for justice, he fought in wars. And one day after a horrible experiment done on him by the military, his war career was ended super early. But following this, when a bunch of hitmen kidnap his children and slit his youngest son's Joey's throat, Deathstroke decides, you know what, I can't not fight. This is what I was born to do. And he becomes the Terminator. This is also what causes the end of his marriage. She also explains that Slade had been working with the Hive. And Dick decides, you know what, enough is enough. He runs upstairs. And when he comes back down, he is now the hero Nightwing. It's also here that Jericho becomes a thing for the first time too, which was necessary for the story, but I do wish this had just been Dick's moment. Nightwing and Jericho go to the Hive and they manage to sneak in successfully, but they find out their friend's life energy is about to be sucked out. When they begin fighting, it looks like all is lost, like they are taken down super easily because Dick's been out of commission for a while, Jericho just started being a hero, but that's when Jericho, who has the power to possess people, possesses his own father. Tara doesn't know about this. She thinks Slade has become weak because his son's nearby. She thinks she's been betrayed. So she uses her earth powers to bring down the entire building on everyone in an attempt to kill everyone she only manages to kill herself. 
Everyone's super happy to find out Dick is happy and healthy and back to working with them, but also they're heartbroken because one of their closest friends and allies turned out to be a traitor and just killed herself. So because Dick was now in a new stage of his career, he does take a back seat for a while while writers try to figure out what they want to do with him now. Like, he's not Robin anymore, who is Dick Grayson going to become? You know, the fact that he was in a relationship with Starfire ended up defining him. The fact that he was emotionally traumatized by Jason Todd's death ended up defining him. It was the same issue as he had when he was Robin, but on a much wider scale. This issue was especially highlighted in one story where Starfire is called back to Tamaran. She doesn't know why she's being called back to Tamaran, but she's excited to get to see her parents and her brother. And while there, her father reveals that there's a civil war going on in Tamaran, and she has to marry a man from Tamaran right then and right there even though Dick and Starfire are in a relationship. This man is called Karis and he's like, look, I've got my own girlfriend, we were planning to get married as well, so you know what, you can stay in a relationship with Dick Starfire, I'll stay in a relationship with my girlfriend, and we'll just get married and it'll only like symbolize peace, but we won't really be married. Starfire is all for this, but Dick is actually a little bit of a bastard towards Starfire and is like, I can't do this, I can't be with a married woman, that's so wrong. And he's also like a little bit of a bastard towards her because he's like, you know, you're so savage when you're on this planet, why can't you be how you are on Earth? Not really understanding that Starfire is now in her home culture, so she's acting as she would in her home culture. And when she's on Earth, she's respecting Earth culture, which is why she tones things down a bit. A while passes and Starfire eventually agrees to this marriage, even though she really doesn't want to, but she's like, millions of lives are gonna be saved by me getting married, I can't say no. But it turns out it was Blackfire that had caused this whole civil war just to bring both of her siblings and her parents back to Tamaran to force Starfire to get married just to break her heart before Blackfire goes to kill her. By the time this is revealed, Starfire is already married and then a massive battle breaks out. The only way to end it is for both Starfire and her father to abdicate from the throne so Blackfire becomes the Empress of Tamaran. It is worth mentioning at this point, everyone's like near naked for like 90% of the story and I kind of live for the aesthetic, I'm not gonna lie. So Blackfire forces her parents and her siblings onto a star cruiser and makes it explode. What she doesn't know is they're actually able to escape before the star cruiser explodes. Dick and the others would be taken to the moon shortly after this and they would be there for quite a while until eventually Dick goes to Starfire and is like, I want to go back to Earth. And Starfire is like, well, we can still be together. We can be in a relationship. And Dick is just like, you don't understand, you are married, I can't be of a married woman. Which, okay, fair enough, if you can't be of a married woman, you can't be of a married woman. But then on top of this he adds, you're so different from how you are on earth, why have you changed, this isn't fair, everyone's being horrible to me, and he's like, making this whole thing about him, as if this isn't heartbreaking for her as well. Like, he's a complete bastard towards her. And the only thing Starfire can say is, I love you, over and over and over, and Dick just walks away and returns to Earth. When he gets back to Earth, it turns out Raven has been missing for a while, Donna hasn't done a great job as the leader of the Titans, so Dick goes off on his own to find Raven, and ends up being captured and brainwashed by Brother Blood yet again, along with Raven. Starfire returns to Earth, and the Titans go to look for both Dick and Raven. The Titans would go to save both Dick and Raven, but obviously Raven's really powerful and they're not able to stand up to her when she's embraced her evil abilities and she's powering up Brother Blood. And Brother Blood begins to kill Starfire on live TV. And Dick doesn't do anything this time other than look directly at her camera and says, the Titans were wrong, all hail Brother Blood. Cyborg manages to summon his last little bit of energy and blast it at Brother Blood and this doesn't do anything. But when Blood turns to Cyborg, this is what snaps Dick out of his brainwashing. He goes to attack Brother Blood. Again, this doesn't do anything. And Mother Mayhem ends up injecting Dick with like all of these mind control drugs once again. In the end, it's up to Raven to break free of her brainwashing to take down Brother Blood. Once everyone's had a chance to recover and regroup, Nightwing and Starfire finally have a conversation once again. They're a lot more calm this time. Emotions aren't as high and Dick does say to her, I love you, I really love you, I want to be with you, but my beliefs won't allow me to be with a married woman, and you are married, and you might not see that as a big deal in your culture, but for me, it's the end or be all. And Starfire says she loves him too, and she wants to be with him, 
but that's that. They just can't be together because she is married. Just gonna throw this out there, they do get back together in the end, and then break apart, and then get back together, and then break apart. It's sort of their thing. In regards to his relationship with Bruce at this point, things weren't good. The two of them hadn't actually spoken for quite a few years at this point. So when Jason Todd is brutally murdered at the hands of the Joker, this really emotionally affects Dick because first of all, this kid was basically his brother. Like the two of them weren't that close because Dick really didn't speak to Batman so he barely saw Jason, but he sort of was filled with regret that he didn't get to know Jason a bit better. And also when he found out it was because Jason wasn't following Batman's instruction, once again, he feels really guilty. But after this, this kid called Tim Drake would track down Dick and would be like, hey, I know you used to be Robin. I know Bruce is probably Batman. You need to be Robin once again because Batman has gone crazy. Dick refused because he wasn't gonna be Robin again, but he did agree Batman needs a partner. But while this conversation is going on, it turned out Batman actually needed help fighting Two-Face. So Nightwing goes off to help fight Two-Face, and the two of them ended up being saved by Tim Drake, who was dressed as Robin in the end. Bruce allows Tim to become Robin, and the focus of his training was more, don't fight unless you have to more than anything else. Back with the Titans, it's revealed that Mirage disguised herself as Starfire and slept with Dick, and Starfire and Dick were back in a relationship at this point. Starfire flips out at this and says, okay, she looked like me, fine, but did she smell like me? Did she walk like me? Did she talk like me? You know me inside and out. You should be able to tell the difference. She splits up from Dick, and then Dick becomes like, a weirdo stalker. At one point, he even turned up at a nightclub Starfire was just hanging out with her friends at and says to her, you belong to me, babe. And Starfire freaks out because she used to be a slave. She doesn't want to hear that. So she says to him, I belong to no man and like throws him away and storms off. And then he like turns up at her apartment shortly after this and just impulsively proposes to her and she like accepts as if this is healthy. Things move super fast. They tried to get their marriage license right away, but then it turns out Starfire is not human, so the two of them can't get married, but they decide to go ahead with the wedding anyway. But Raven, who had been reborn as the avatar of Trigon, ends up crashing the wedding. Raven plants this demon seed, the seed of all evil inside of Starfire, but also in the seed was the good Raven. So Starfire starts having like all of these trippy visions while the good Raven tries bringing her out of these visions because if Starfire gives into them, she'll become Trigon's slave. And obviously Starfire doesn't want to be a slave once again. Things eventually reach a boiling point with these visions because they never stop. Every time Starfire begins falling asleep, they start from square one once again. So she splits up from Dick and leaves for space to try and find herself. And after this, Dick's activity with the Titans was very limited for quite a long time. In fact, I think this was his last major story arc in the new Titans. So that's pretty sad. When Nightwing finds out that Bruce had been taken out by Bane, he's actually a little bit pissed off because he doesn't find out from Bruce, he doesn't find out from Tim, he has to find out from Oracle. He speaks to Tim about the situation because at this point he still doesn't really want to talk to Bruce and Tim says, yeah, there's this new guy, he's called Jean-Paul Valley. he's sort of taken over for Bruce as Batman and I don't think he's doing a good job, I don't think he's cut out for being Batman because he's taking a lot of risks and I'm scared he might kill someone. Dick is like, well, why didn't Bruce ask me to be Batman? And Tim is like, well, would you have accepted? And Dick is obviously like, yeah, I completely would have. And Tim's like, would you have wanted to accept? And Dick is like, uh, no. And Tim's like, that's why Bruce didn't ask you. Not to spite you, he was respecting you. Tim again stresses that he doesn't think Jean-Paul Valley is cut out for the job and Dick basically leaves saying, yeah, well, if Bruce thinks he's good enough, then he's good enough. Which I honestly kind of feel like is a bit of a dick move when your younger brother basically is telling you people's lives are in danger and he's like, yeah, whatever. Come on, Dick. <laughs> Months later, Bruce would actually come to Nightwing and would admit he made a mistake. Turns out that Jean-Paul was actually a part of something called the Order of Dumas, which was basically this organization that bred people to be murderous vigilantes. So obviously now he's regretting his decision. Tim and Dick sneak into the Batcave so they can place all this surveillance equipment in there so they can get to know Jean-Paul's schedule. And they see him having like 
full-on conversations with himself. And Robin, Nightwing and Batman go to fight Jean-Paul. But then Robin and Nightwing get distracted by something going on with Catwoman, so by the time they catch up with Batman, it actually looks like Batman dies in the Batmobile and Jean-Paul just steps out of it with his armor turned red. Dick freaks out and he actually doesn't see Bruce turns up just fine and he takes Robin away somewhere. Meanwhile, the fight between Nightwing and Jean-Paul is actually really even for quite a while, but eventually like it's a losing battle because Dick has been through a lot recently. So he wasn't as strong as he potentially could be. When this fight ends with Nightwing defeated, Jean-Paul goes back to the manor and Bruce is there waiting for him to defeat him. And that's how the day saved. But being fair, Bruce wasn't ready to be Batman again. His back wasn't fully healed and he had lost a lot of strength while he was like waiting for his back to recover. So he asked Dick to become a temporary Batman and Dick accepts. During this time, Dick and Tim actually got to know each other really well. They developed this brotherly relationship and actually see each other as equals. He was also finally able to defeat Two-Face and move on from the accident that killed the DA. But most of all, since Bruce had asked Dick to be Batman, this meant that for the first time like ever, Bruce's respect for Dick was like clear as day. So you might be wondering where Alfred was during this whole thing. Well, at the beginning of this story, Alfred actually tried caring for Bruce, getting him to rest, getting him to not worry about Jean-Paul, but Bruce wouldn't listen and he actually pushed Alfred away. So Alfred was like, you know what, I'm done with this, I'm gonna go travel around the world he eventually found himself in London. Dick eventually tracks Alfred down to London and is like, you know what, I'm gonna go find out what's going on with him. And Alfred actually tries actively avoiding Dick, but you know, it's Dick Grayson, you can't avoid him forever. When the two of them finally get to talk, Dick is like, I didn't come because Bruce sent me, I came because one of the people that raised me up and vanished and went on a worldwide adventure. What's up with that? Alfred explains that he was so hurt by Bruce, he wasn't thinking about other people. And then the two hug. As the story goes on, it turns out a man named Derek, who's apparently Alfred's son, has a lot of gambling debt with local mobsters, and they want Derek to hand over government papers to do with the Channel Tunnel, since Derek works for the Ministry of Transport, and he has to use this to pay back his gambling debt. It's actually a woman that Alfred used to see that told him that Derek was his son. So Nightwing actually ends up having to go on a car chase to stop a van filled with explosives from going into the Channel Tunnel, causing like an international incident. Meanwhile, Alfred and Derek end up getting into a sword fight with local mobsters and Derek actually ends up getting killed. But after this, it turns out that Derek wasn't Alfred's son after all. The woman Alfred used to see just lied to Alfred in the hopes that he would get Derek out of his debt. Alfred is heartbroken at this because not only did the woman he thought he loved lie to him, within the space of like a few weeks, he gained a son and lost a son and then found out that wasn't his son. So Alfred turns to Dick and is like, you know what? I'm just gonna go home. And so the two go back to Gotham together. Back in Gotham, Dick actually has Batman watch him save a girl, and then Dick turns around and says, I actually don't want to be a hero anymore. Being Batman made me realize this isn't for me. And so he says that he's gonna just quit being a hero. But then when Alfred turns up with some of Dick's parents' stuff, they found a note saying his parents might not have been killed by boss Zuko after all. The letter they got was from Kralia, so Dick naturally decides to go there, but the prince of the country learns of Dick Grayson's coming and sends a hitman to kill him. Dick manages to defend himself and contact Oracle to investigate the country, and she finds out that the prince is planning a full-on ethnic cleansing of the country. Dick realizes he has no choice but to continue being Nightwing, so he has Harold Allnut construct a new costume for him that shows off his best features. This was important for intimidation purposes. So Dick and his two butt cheeks try to save the entire country, but he ends up being captured and sentenced to execution. He ends up being like covered in honey and lowered into his pit where these rats are gonna come in and eat him alive. Inside the pit, there's already a guy and while escaping, Nightwing learns that this guy was actually a part of his parents' murder. Turns out his parents actually saw the assassination that put the current prince in power. So they had to be killed because they might have told someone. Dick and this man managed to make it out of the pit, but the man is shot before he can reveal more details about the Grayson's death. 
but Dick manages to get him to a hospital in Gotham before he dies. Not only does the man manage to go to the media and expose like how corrupted this country is in the hopes that it can be taken down through the proper channels, Dick also finds out that his parents weren't actually assassinated by the Kravian hitmen. Turns out Boss Zuko actually got to his parents first. They would have died that night either way, but Boss Zuko just did it first. When Dick leaves, Batman is there and the two start talking. And this is probably the most emotion-filled conversation these two have ever had. He explains that he was trying to connect to his childhood. That's all this was an attempt in and he failed at that. But along the way, he realized he did have a father all along, a father who looked after him and raised him and let him be him and never expected more than that. And when it came time to fill his father's shoes, he went about it in a way that required him to imitate his father. And that's what made him miserable. Nothing his father did and nothing about his father's identity. And of course he is talking about Bruce and by extension Alfred. And he doesn't directly say that he loves them, but like it's heavily implied. Eventually when the apocalypse virus breaks out in Gotham, Batman calls in Nightwing to help. Nightwing, Huntress and Batman work together to stop people from bringing down Babylon Towers. Robin ends up getting infected with the virus and Dick is like really panicking. They take Tim back to the Batcave and Dick actually wants to call in Tim's father because he sees Tim as a younger brother and he's scared the one person he sees as a brother that's still alive is going to die. However, Azriel ends up figuring out a cure, or so they thought, turns out his cure only puts the virus into a dormant state, which is better than nothing because people are safe for now. Azriel alludes that the true cure might be somewhere in Sudan. So Nightwing, Robin, and Batman go to Sudan and end up being captured by the League of Assassins. Naturally, wherever there's the League of Assassins, Ra's al Ghul is not far behind. Turns out Ra's al Ghul spread around the virus because take over the world. Nightwing, Batman and Robin all end up separated from each other and Nightwing actually has to have a sword fight with Ra's al Ghul but he's already badly injured but he manages to hold his own. It's like imagine what this guy could do if he wasn't constantly depressed or injured. Also quick note you know like how there's an ongoing joke about Nightwing's butt? Like the artists must have known what they were doing when they drew this scene. Like come on. Anyway, Dick and his butt cheeks hold down their own in the fight for quite a while, but he's too hurt to do anything major. So when all seems lost, Batman actually comes in and helps him, but Raish unfortunately escapes. To cut a long story short, the three of them would stop the virus being spread in Paris, then they would return to Gotham. Nightwing and Huntress fight off the League of Assassins while Robin goes to get the cure. The boat sets on fire, Nightwing and Huntress are overwhelmed, and that's when Tim runs out. He's already transferred the cure to Oracle, grabs his friends, they jump off the boat, and it explodes. Following this though, 21 bodies end up floating into Gotham Harbor. All of them have two things in common. They're all members of the Angel Marin gang, and they're all from Bloodhaven. Dick goes to the gang city, Bloodhaven, and literally seconds after getting off the bus, he sees a little girl about to be abused. He turns her around, tells her to go to Gotham, go to Wayne Corp, say Dick Grayson sent you, you'll get a job. On his first night there, he finds out that Black Mask is trying to expand his territory outside of Gotham. He apparently kidnapped the local Asian mob's kids and stuck them in this fridge. Nightwing manages to catch up to them to save these kids, but when he opens up this fridge, there's only a briefcase in there, but inside that briefcase is these unfertilized eggs. But the gang handcuff Nightwing to this fridge and then push him into the river. It looks like Nightwing's gonna drown, but he's actually able to get out of the situation and go to the local police with these eggs, and he's arrested on the spot for vigilantism. The commissioner then has a detective go outside to kill Nightwing, and the detective reveals things are super corrupt in the city, but he also says he believes Nightwing might be able to make a difference, so he lets him live. Then he sends Nightwing off to stop a smuggling situation with the promise that he'll explain more later. To cut a long story short, he was hoping Nightwing would die while doing the smuggling situation thing, so the detective's corrupt as well. Side note, he becomes super attracted to his new landlady just because of her accent. Like, he doesn't even see her face and he decides he's attracted to her. When he does eventually see her face, he has like this moment like, whoa, Asian people can have Irish accents too? Time would go on, he would still be no closer to finding out what caused the death of these 21 men. And eventually, Tim would come to visit him to check out this new city himself. While they're investigating, they do have a quick conversation. And here, Dick actually says to Tim, you know you're the best 
at being Robin out of the three Robins so far. And Tim doesn't really understand, but he says, but Dick never wanted to be Robin because there was never a Robin before him. He was the first, he was the first attempt. And as Dick grew, he just wanted to be his own person. Jason couldn't follow instructions. He had no business being in this line of work. And Tim, he compliments Batman the best because he keeps Batman grounded. He's the most logical, he's the best detective. And the job of Robin is basically to be like this weird compliment for Batman, so it makes sense that Tim would be the best Robin. The two of them had been stalking out a betting office a lawyer had actually tipped Dick off to to investigate. And when it seemed like it was time to spring into action, Tim springs into action without thinking, and a car explodes, it turns out to be a setup, and the two of them managed to stop this whole betting office rig thing by throwing copious amounts of money that had been stolen in two fires. After this, Dick uses his experience with Robin as a wake-up call. He goes to the loan sharks, he goes to the local gangs, he starts going down the food chain. While doing this, the leader of the Angel Marin gang turns up dead. Dick is eventually led to a nursing home, and a major benefactor of this nursing home is Roland Desmond otherwise known as Blockbuster. And here the comic reveals that Blockbuster is the source of all the corruption in Bloodhaven. And the detective from the start of the story is on Blockbuster's side. Dick would go to confront Blockbuster and would almost be killed. But Blockbuster is like, no, we're not gonna kill him here. We wanna make sure he dies in a way that keeps even Batman away. And so he's handed over to this motorcycle gang and Dick is able to escape with his life. And this is the beginning of a long story arc that includes a long animosity between Dick and Blockbuster. But he would have other adventures in this time. He would start working with the Birds of Prey. He would even begin dating Barbara Gordon, which was very, very sweet to see. And even the Titans would get back together and he'd start working with them again. But he would also start working as an officer for the Bloodhaven Police Department. So during the daytime, in his day job, he would see the worst of humanity. As Nightwing, he would see the worst of humanity. And you could see it was etching away at him. And Barbara kept saying to him, you don't need a job. Why are you doing this? Things eventually hit a breaking point in Nightwing number 87 when Tarantula, who had figured out Dick Grayson's secret identity, crashes Dick and Barbara's date. Later, when Dick and Barbara manage to talk about this, Barbara's like, wow, Dick, you have turned into Bruce. You will not stop going on about work. Dick freaks out at her and then Barbara lets out all of her frustrations with this relationship and she says, I'm tired of you never letting me look after myself. I'm tired of you making me feel like I'm worth less than you. And I'm tired of you always playing, hey, remember when Batgirl? And then she just looks him straight in the eyes and says, why do you love me? And he gives this heartfelt speech about how he's always loved her. Whenever he looks at her, he gets a lump in his throat and she is the strongest person he knows. But she still finishes this by saying, you know what, we should break up. So this is on Dick's mind, but shortly after this, a circus he had been working with ends up being burnt down by Blockbuster because Blockbuster had managed to figure out Dick's secret identity and he was using this to torture him at this point. Dick has this like emotional breakdown. He goes to Barbara, asks to spend the night. She lets him and when he wakes up the next day, he tries assuming they're back together and Barbara says, no, we, we can't be together. I love you, but we can't be together and Dick leaves by slamming the door. On the Titans front, graduation day would come around. Basically, a company called Optitron would want to sponsor both Young Justice and the Titans as a massive tax write-off. Dick doesn't like this idea at all, and that's when the teams are attacked by an android and would hospitalize Cyborg, Arjun, Empress, and Impulse. Nightwing after this feels like he's totally failed his team as a leader, and that's when a Superman robot from Star Labs wakes up, kills off Omen, pretty much wipe the floor with the teams, and then when it looks like it's finally Finally defeated, Donna Troy is killed by this Superman robot. Every major player from across the DC universe attends Donna Troy's funeral because she touched the hearts of so many people and Dick feeling so guilty over Donna Troy's death just decides, you know what, I can't, I can't do this anymore. The Titans are over, like that's it, we've broken up. And on Young Justice side, they would break up as well. Three months after this, Arsenal would come to Nightwing and is like, hey, how about we have a team that will be strictly work, no emotional attachment? And Nightwing's like, you know what? I could use that. And this team would be the Outsiders. But Dick doesn't develop too much individually in this book. He's basically like the team's leader. And in fact, at one point, Dick is swapped out for Batman. And the book structure is basically identical. Back in Bloodhaven, Blockbuster had been wearing down Dick's soul. 
and this is when they have one final battle. The whole time Blockbuster is tormenting him saying, you know what, there isn't a single reason you shouldn't kill me because there isn't a single reason I should be this much of a dick, but I am because I find it fun. Tarantula turns up with a gun and Dick could fully stop her from shooting Blockbuster, but he doesn't, he just lets her do it. And once it's done and Blockbuster is dead, Dick realizes what he's done and he just goes into this catatonic state. He takes himself to the roof and just falls down to his knees in this full catatonic state. Tarantula, who had had a thing for Dick for a while at this point, follows him to the roof, sees his mental state, sees this person in a catatonic state, pushes him to the ground, takes off his pants, and rapes him. She then just drags down this semi-catatonic Dick Grayson for a few days, and it's only when he gets a phone call from Batman calling him back to Gotham that Dick would snap out of this. When Nightwing gets to Gotham, it turns out a massive gang war has broken out. You see, Stephanie Brown was hired as Robin for a little while when Tim Drake was forced to quit being Robin, but she was quickly fired as being Robin, so she steals one of Batman's plans to end all crime in Gotham. She misunderstands the plan and ends up having several of Gotham's major gang leaders killed. This obviously creates a massive power vacuum, so everyone's fighting for this power, which creates a massive gang war. Nightwing agrees to help out Batman, but Tarantula would turn up, and so this causes tension between Nightwing, Oracle, and Tarantula. Nightwing, Batgirl, and Batman all go to a high school to stop a hostage situation which was happening at this school, like these gang members had taken children hostage. They turned up too late. A young girl called Dala Aquista had been killed at the beginning of the gang war at this school. Batman takes her outside, the media start taking pictures, and they accuse Batman of killing this young girl, which obviously isn't true. Later on, Nightwing would be battling Firefly, then the police turn up and shoot Nightwing in his leg. He would pass out and would be saved by Alfred, but this puts him out of commission for the rest of the story arc. He isn't even able to help when Barbara's watchtower ends up being destroyed. After the story, Dick decides that he's going to turn himself and Tarantula in for the death of Blockbuster. He's like, you know what, enough is enough, we need to do our time in prison. Dick doesn't stay in jail long since the Bloodhaven City Police Department pin all of his evidence on Tarantula. Like, they decide, you know what, Dick is totally innocent. And Dick makes a massive deal about this, like, he thinks it's so wrong. And as he's leaving the police office, this guy in a cell hands a card to him. Supposedly, after this, Dick and Bruce have a massive falling out, and this leads Dick to joining up with and living with the Mafia. As the plot goes on, Dick is working as Nightwing sometimes to get info on the Mafia, which leads him to doing work for Black Mask. One time he even runs into Tim, and he tells Tim to forget that they ever knew each other. Deathstroke eventually comes in on this story, and he's like, you know, Dick Grayson, I know who you are, I know you're a good guy, I will reveal your identity to everyone, unless you start training my daughter to prove that you really have turned, because I don't believe you've turned. Dick agrees to do all of this, and he takes up the supervillain identity, Renegade. Training Rose was difficult because she had a major crush on Dick, so she would do stuff to impress him, which ended up putting them in bad situations more often than not. Eventually, it comes to a point where Dick and Rose have to fight Superman, but what Dick doesn't know is Deathstroke has altered Dick's gloves so he can change Dick's heartbeat through them. So this way, Superman won't detect any hesitation in Dick's heartbeat and will think Dick has officially become a turncoat. But Dick doesn't know Rose actually lost her eye a while back and Deathstroke has placed pure kryptonite in Rose's eye socket. Rose would actually jump on Superman, would almost die, Superman would save her, and then he goes around saving a bunch of civilians, and then Dick and Rose would go off after watching Superman in awe for like 10 seconds. When they go back to Deathstroke, Dick reveals that not only has he handed the glove over to Superman so Superman will understand what was going on, he reveals what has been going on for this entire arc. He gained the police's trust a while ago. Now he gained the Mafia's trust, and now he's gained Rose's trust. Dick has managed to basically gain control of all organized crime in Bloodhaven. He knew the only person interested in the city now was Deathstroke, and Dick has said if Deathstroke comes anywhere near the city, he will turn Rose against Deathstroke. The two of them strike a deal. Deathstroke stays away from Bloodhaven, and Dick stays away from Rose. Following this, Bloodhaven's like a utopia. It's one of the best places to live in America, like everyone loves it there, and this lasts for a whole 36 hours. To get back at Nightwing, Deathstroke has the entire city destroyed. He has the society drop the villain Chemo on the city. A hundred 
thousand people would die, and Dick would even succumb to radiation poisoning. When he wakes up, he's in the Batcave, he's covered in chemical burns, and he admits to Alfred that he's the reason Blockbuster is dead. And who overhears him but Batman. Batman knows exactly what's been going on with Dick, because you know it's Batman, and he says, if you want me to forgive you for Blockbuster's death, I can do that. You know, mistakes happen, and it wasn't entirely your fault. Someone else turned up with a gun. But if you want me to forgive you for joining the Mafia and risking your life, joining up with Deathstroke and risking your life, joining up with the police and risking your life, literally having your very soul chipped away at, no. I'm not going to forgive that until you figure out to forgive yourself, until you figure out how to respect your own life. Because how can you save lives if you can't respect your own? Following this, Dick pays Deathstroke a visit, and Deathstroke tries to fight him, but Dick is able to explain to Rose that once, Lex Luthor had a ring, and this ring was made out of kryptonite, and this caused him to develop cancer in his hand, so he had to lose his hand because of this. And that's what will happen to Rose's brain if that kryptonite stays in her eye socket, and it's her father that put that kryptonite in there, fully well knowing what it would do to his daughter. And after this, Rose leaves Deathstroke for good. After this, Dick meets up with Barbara and he says to her, you know what, I'm ready to start taking responsibility for everything I've done. I'm ready to get back what I've lost, and I want to say sorry to everyone that I've hurt. And then he proposes to her, and she accepts. I remember reading this and just being so happy about it because I love Dick and Starfire, but Dick and Barbara, it's like, it's like true love. Like, it's so cheesy to say that, but if you read it, you're like, this is meant to be. And like, so seeing it happen was just like, yes. But a crisis event was still happening, so it was up to Nightwing and Superboy to team up to try and find the centre of the crisis. It turns out that it was Alexander Luthor's tower, but when they get there, Superboy Prime is there and he's ready to kill the both of them. It's thanks to Superboy destroying the tower and sacrificing his own life that the day was saved. Nightwing is obviously upset that Superboy, who was very young, just sacrificed his own life, but he's even more upset because Superboy is his younger brother, Tim Drake's, best friend, and Tim Drake also lost his parents very, very recently to this. The feeling of losing parents and friends is a feeling Dick knows way too well. He never wanted anyone else to go through it, let alone someone he sees as family. After this, Nightwing would recover, and then Bruce goes to him and is like, look, me and Tim are going to travel around the world and retrace my steps in becoming Batman, we'd love for you to come with us. And Dick is like, oh, I want to go, but I'm really not sure if Barbara would be okay with it, because we're kind of engaged now, I'll go speak to her. He goes to speak to Barbara, and she's like, oh, I think you should go. When Dick asks why, she's like, well, first you lived in a circus, and you lived in your parents' shadow. Then you lived in a mansion, and you lived in Batman's shadow. Then you were a hero of Bloodhaven, and you were the hero of Bloodhaven. You have no idea who Dick Grayson is. Go and figure out who Dick Grayson is, and then we can be together. Once you're back, you can propose to me properly. She says that the moment she was shot in her back and disabled, she was no longer able to live for her father or Batman. She was able to figure out who Barbara Gordon is and what Barbara Gordon's real talents were. She hands back the ring he gave to her, and Dick leaves. But before he does leave to travel around the world, he gives her an envelope, and in this envelope is a picture and the ring on a chain. And he promises her that he'll be back for her someday. Seriously, I love this relationship so much. His journey will be cut off early as he ends up having to team up with Batwoman to stop Intergang. I'm not gonna like dwell on this too much because it was more of a story to introduce Batwoman to the world more than anything else. This was a bit of a weird time for Dick because DC couldn't do anything too major for him as they had quite an important plan that we're gonna get into in a second. But one important thing did happen when the Titans got back together. You see, Raven's brother, Lust, ends up taking control of Dick and Starfire, and the two of them end up sleeping together. And later on, they start talking about it. Starfire flat out says the two of them should stop. When they first got together, the two of them were very, very young. And now they've grown older, whenever they find an excuse to like get back together, they use that excuse. But whenever they're together, it ends in heartbreak. And then she asks Dick a very simple and fair question. Do you love me in the way that means forever? And Dick just says, no. And that was that. For most comic readers, that was like the ending to their relationship. Like that gave us closure. We knew they were never going to be together again past this point, And that's all it ever needed to be. You know, they'd been together since the 80s. 
and this was like 2008, there didn't need to be more because they were okay with there not being more. By this point we just knew they weren't right for each other and it was finally nice to see them be mature enough to know it was time to move on. After Batman Rest in Peace where Bruce Wayne dies, Dick becomes strange for a little bit. You could tell something was off about him and you couldn't quite put your finger on it and nothing major happened with him. There was a point where he does this skydive where he dives down from the stratosphere but the most telling thing was the sequence of panels where Alfred, Tim and Dick have a night in together and they prepare popcorn, they prepare dinner, they watch a movie and in not a single one of these panels do any of these characters make eye contact or say anything and you just know if you've ever lost a person in your life that sense of heartbreak is just so present in these panels. These characters don't have any emotions on their face, they don't say anything, but it's there. It's that sense of loss and it was so subtle and so well done and it's just one of my favourite sequences to this day. While there's no Batman, a new black mask would turn up and he takes control of Arkham's inmates using these microchips and starts causing chaos around the city. Nightwing calls together every single member of the Bat family from around the world. Then a new Azreal turns up, has a sword fight with Nightwing, then Damien steals one of the Batmobiles, ends up crashing it into the nearby swamp, is almost eaten by Killer Croc and killed by Poison Ivy, then Nightwing goes to save Damien and as they're flying away, they are taken out of the sky by Jason Todd. Dick would fight Jason, but Jason would shoot Damien. In the background while all this was going on, Tim has decided, well if no one's gonna be Batman, I guess I'm gonna do it. But the issue is, Tim doesn't want to be Batman. As the story goes on, Jason tries to kill Tim. Tim is able to trick Jason into thinking that he's dead by slowing his heartbeat down to only eight beats a minute, which is a trick Batman taught him. Dick begins fighting Jason, trying to figure out where Tim is and why Jason is doing all of this. Their fight eventually makes its way on top of a moving train and Dick manages to kick Jason over and Jason's hanging onto the train for his dear life while the train's going over a bridge. Dick reaches out his hand and is like, Jason, give me your hand, it's over. And Jason just lets go, dropping into the river below, seemingly ending his own life. Following this, Dick takes the mantle of Batman for himself and Damien becomes his Robin. Now, it's worth noting, Dick actually didn't want to make Damien Robin. He didn't particularly work well with Damien at this point and he didn't think Damien was particularly well suited for the role. He gave him the role of Robin because it was the only way he knew how to bring up a kid. Because if you think about it, Damien for his entire life had been raised to fight. Then when he finally meets his father, he sees his father is a crime fighter. And then he sees his father die. This kid is gonna be messed up. He needs something to channel his energy into. And the only thing Dick can think of is being Robin. In addition to this, Robin and Batman shouldn't be equals. Robin should be still in training. And Dick fully sees Tim as his equal. This run on Batman is very unique in the sense that for the first time, a Batman book works on developing Robin more than Batman. Like this book was called Batman and Robin, but yeah, like Dick is there to just guide the story and all character development is basically around Damien, which makes sense because this is his first starring role basically. They would initially go up against Professor Pig, but the differences between Dick and Damien would cause Damien to go off on his own to fight Pig and he would almost be turned into one of Pig's Dollatrons. These Dollatrons are basically like Pig's mind control robot slaves, but it requires real people to be turned into them. Grant Morrison, who wrote this run, believes comics have the potential to be the best thing humanity has ever made. And so he just wanted to have fun with it. He wanted to do anything and everything he can think of. You know, you're given the keys to Batman, you're basically being given the keys to DC's most expensive car. After Blackest Night happens and the Bat family come very close to seeing the dead people that they all miss and love, Dick decides, you know what, I'm gonna go to London and reanimate Bruce Wayne's corpse in a Lazarus pit. He ends up teaming up with Batwoman, Knight and Squire and when he puts Bruce Wayne in the Lazarus pit, it turns out to be an insane clone. This is not Bruce Wayne at all. They have to stop the clone from killing Alfred and after they do this, Dick finally admits Bruce Wayne might be alive somewhere after all, which is what everyone else pretty much had been saying from the beginning. Turns out Bruce Wayne is in the past and he's fighting through various time periods in history. That's a completely different story and it's 
really convoluted. What you need to know is Dr. Hurt starts working with the Joker with the intention of returning to the world as Thomas Wayne. Hurt then has Dick and Damien captured, unmasks Dick, shoots Dick in the back of his head in an attempt to get Damien on his side, and then opens up this box that apparently Bruce had used in the past, and in there is just a note that says, gotcha. And the room begins to fill with smoke, and Bruce appears from the past as Batman. So Dick, who is okay apparently, Damien and Bruce all team up to defeat Hurt. But in the end, Hurt would actually be defeated by the Joker, one of his own allies, not the Bat family. Bruce wouldn't return as Batman just yet. In fact, he goes public and announces to the world that he is the one that has been financially supporting Batman through all of these years. Doesn't say that he is Batman, just that he financially supports him and he opens up Batman Incorporated. And following this, it's pretty much nothing major until the New 52, which happened in 2011. If you don't know, in 2011, DC restarted their continuity back to square one. They like were really picky and choosy about which stories they kept. Batman continuity was kind of confusing to figure out what was still around in the beginning, but a lot of these stories and characters are making a slow return in DC Rebirth. But I'm not going to be covering any of that in this video, I'm going to be covering it in my next video, where we will be talking about his return as Nightwing, we're going to be talking about the time Dick was a secret agent, and we're going to be talking about the time he died. I really love Dick Grayson and Dick Grayson's butt cheeks, I think they're both one of the most beloved DC characters all in one package. The only time I've ever really had issues with him in terms of writing was in the New 52, he had this run called Grayson, and he was being written in a way that doesn't make sense for the character of Dick Grayson. You see with Dick Grayson, emotions and his own story always come first, and then characterization, and then it's the plot, and in Grayson, it did it in a way where the reader could project themselves onto Dick Grayson, and I don't want that from this character. And lots of people liked that because they got to feel like they were Dick Grayson, they were like, yeah, this is super cool, I feel super cool reading this book. They didn't quite realise what was going on, and I was like, no, this isn't right for this character. I just feel like he's got so much personality and it was such a waste to write him like that. I'm so happy that he's Nightwing again. I really just love this character and one day I really want to cosplay him. I'll leave links down below to where you can buy both current and past Nightwing comics for yourself. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. So what do you think of Dick Grayson? Please let me know in the comments down below. Also don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, do all of my social links, check out my Patreon if you want to see more videos like this. Also don't forget to check out my PayPal donation link if you don't really like Patreon. But for now, my name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.